Hello, Gearspace. I'm here from Bitwig at Superbooth, where um, we have just released into beta our new version, which is 5.2. We've got a lot of uh, studio tools and other things going on. So one of those things is a nice new compressor that is trying to do all of the things you might want from a compressor. So if I take a look at the Compressor Plus here and I pull it down, I'm immediately seeing color response because in this device, it's actually working in a multi-band analysis fashion. So before I even do anything, it's listening to the different bands of the signal and deciding how to respond. Uh, if I want to control that directly, I can get a nice big view of all the different bands and say, well, I just want to nudge them a little bit. Like I want the, maybe the bass side to trigger a little bit less than everything else. So it's directly controllable that way if you want to go in and touch uh, the guts of everything. But without even going that far, uh, I, it also has a sense of character. So instead of giving you a thousand parameters, we kind of rolled these into a chooser that says, maybe I want vanilla, I just want to program everything myself, but otherwise, I've got a whole spectrum of going from a smooth type of response, maybe I'm mastering, to a smash response. That's the extreme side. So maybe what I want to do here is, uh, is really trigger things in a nice hard way. So I've got these drums here, and we can kind of go through the characters for a minute. So smooth, it's slow and not adding any harmonics, really. If we go to over, it enters the compression quicker and stays there. So you hear the snare getting pulled back a lot, but it's really giving the whole signal a bit more push. Uh, and in the middle, you know, a kind of mix, mix bus uh, glue type flavor for connecting everything that you've got and responding well. And then past that, the ones that are a little bit more expressive. So resist, which is pushing in all the directions, and then, yeah, smash, which is over-compressing, but potentially adding harmonics. And if you want to color that further, then you've got some VCA mode saying, how do I, do I want to act like I'm a clean multi-band touching everything? Or maybe I want more of a predictable analog transistor kind of flavor. So there's all these different colors before we even get to tape saturation. We're kind of trying to get it all to poke through and work with the different types of signals because there's so many reasons to use a compressor, so it's all trying to be built in here in one place. Uh, on top of that, in the studio tool side, if we take this little synthy sound over here, Uh, we also went ahead and took some ideas of vintage EQs and then made them new. So if I go over to our EQ category, oh, excuse me, our EQ category, we've got something new called Sculpt, which is really modeling uh, the Pultec EQP1, which is famous because it has only a few choices, including the ability to both boost and attenuate the low band. So we can already see like the before and after. So there's a signal coming in. Oop. Well, we'll just do stereo here actually. So you can boost the low end and then just use it for a little bit of tuning in the middle. And it does some nice subtle brightness on top of everything which can be really nice before you go ahead and we give you a new choice saying, well, the original had the tube option, so maybe for my color saturation, right now I'm impossibly clean. I could provide my own saturation afterwards or my, a plug-in I like on top uh, and just use the familiar interface with all the musical choices. Or I can go ahead and say, well, give me the tube response, which is very similar to the original EQP1, or even like the compressor had a different transistor kind of flavor with its odd harmonics and mid-range punch and just a little bit of a different sound altogether. Um, and on top of that, I have a little uh, piano thing here we can kind of lean towards it. Nice 
muffled, muted piano kind of sound a lot of people want to use these days. In the EQ category, um, we do have another one called Focus, which is making the old Pultec MEQ5, which went for the which went for the mid-range Focus because anything I grab here, any emphasis I'm doing is really living in the center. So it was famous on guitars and other mid-range things for a long, long time. Still used today. And even just pushing that peak up and then going to the different color modes, I'm very quickly hearing some of the, the saturation that's coming out of here. Or a transistor mode instead. So a lot there with EQs, and then the simplest one you could imagine, just a nice basic tilt EQ, which puts you one knob away from brightening the sound by tilting one side of the spectrum up and one side of the spectrum down. So you can see here um, where it's just now the whole top is up or the whole bottom is up instead. Now, one last little nice thing that has been put onto all of these EQs, and I'll go ahead and see the left and right signal for a minute. They all have this stereoize option in the inspector, which I could also show over here in the help view, where it just lets you say, pretend I have two of these original hardware units, like a full component modeled version for the left side and for the right side, or for the mid and the side, if you want to work that way. But in this case, I just want to take this piano that's a little bit brighter and push it and say, well, the right side should be the part that gets a little bit higher and the left side lower, and I'm automatically kind of putting things into a stereo width place, but through a nice sounding model EQ. So, yeah, there's a whole lot of things that got added. And then on top of that, the ability to take things like drums that we're hearing here in the background. And in terms of editing tools, the second I click into the waveform now, all I have to do is use my keyboard cursor and it's going straight for every onset that it finds in the file. So if I'm here and doing some editing workflows, even with one hand and one on a microphone, now I'm just going around, I can slice the whole thing up, I can make selections as I like. And then I can do whatever I want. It's obvious to reverse, but if I reverse the pattern, I can do something totally different with what's here. And it's all under the keyboard. Whether I'm working with onsets or notes or automation, I can select whatever I'm doing and go for it. So this is just a quick summary of the top three features in Bitwig 5.2. Uh, we have a once-in-a-lifetime sale right now. You might want to do that. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Gearspace. Good to see you.